Amen. We're supposed to be giving God honor and praise and glory. Amen. Even when death comes knocking at someone's door, a friend or a loved one. Amen. We know that as I always open up every session to give my honor to God, which is the head of my life and the light of my salvation, in whom I fear. Amen. I do not know whom you fear today. Amen. But the word of God says, the earth and the world and the fullness thereof belongeth unto the Lord, and they who dwell therein. Whether you know it or not, you still should be given God praise. Man, as I said, that no matter what is taking place in your life, what is going on, amen, and you may seem as if your world is upside down or the world is closing in on you, amen, knowing that whether you know it or not, someone else is going through the same thing that you have gone through. What the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. For it has already been. So don't be fooled or be fooled. The same thing that you're going through. Somebody else may have had to go through that same thing plus three or four or ten times things. Worse than that. But we do know that it's someone has gone through whatever you're going through. And the inspired word of God sure says that everything that is going on in the world is inside of this 66 books. Amen. Some may not be able to sit down and read that word because you have a rebellious spirit. But once you begin to read that book, and the word of God began to speak to you. And you will see yourself as a reflection in a natural glance. Amen. Tonight I'm not going to be too long. Amen. But this word tonight is going to be quick. Amen. Powerful. Amen. And we pray that it will be. Uh, we get some laughter out of it. Amen. Amen. Because we do know that. Some things some people may be going through, it may be a source of entertainment when you see something taking place in somebody's life. And, you know, some people don't have a chance to see stuff pop off, as they say. Amen. But today we're going to be talking about being cautious of adultery. So we'll be in Proverbs 5 tonight. Because, amen, the period. Amen. And if you don't know what that term means, amen, I got the definitions wrote down here, written down so you may understand. Because when you see and your eyes become open, see, some don't care about the what ifs and what may happen and what may not happen. Or, you know, if, if something does happen, you know, some of us may be all good with it. They, some people are used to stuff going on in their life. Issues of life. Amen. We find here in Proverbs the peril of adultery. Amen. And we know that these are one of those messages that some people don't like to hear, especially if you are the one doing it. The adultery. Amen. It says that the peril of adultery, the peril, amen, the examples of this particular term of the word being spoke tonight and being cautious of adultery and the perils thereof. He said exposure to risk of being injured. Amen. We all know that being cautious is something that we should be if we are stepping out or tipping, towing into 
the nightclub with somebody else or, or around the corner to someone else's house in the same neighborhood. Boy, he said, exposure to the risk of being injured. <laughs> Destroy the loss. Amen. And that word right there, he cares a whole lot of pack and a whole lot of punch. Amen. And a lot of people. Amen. Are finding out what the peril of adultery is like. Oh, it may feel good when you're doing it. Amen. But be cautious of that thing. We have to be cautious of adultery. Amen. They say the other example is apparel is danger, <laughs> fire, put to a place in peril. Amen. The second. Amen. I mean the third definition. Amen. I'm going to say that. We have the examples here, but the definition. But it says it means something that imperils or endangers one or more people in risk that lessens the perils of the streets. Amen. These are the definitions, amen, given by CB. Amen. From my phone. Amen. We have to just put them in place and in order because we know that the we know that the peril of adultery causes exposure or injures or to be destroyed or lost. Loss of life, amen, body or dismemberment, amen, being destroyed uh, uh, of some form or some fashion or being injured in the risk of being injured, destroyed or lost in the danger of fire, amen. It could be the, the, all of those things. But we know that injury, destruction or loss destroy one's lives, livelihood, amen, and your vehicles and your houses and first it may start off with scratching the car and then next thing you know it's stab tires. Next thing you know it's setting something on fire or maybe even setting you on fire or cutting you or cutting dismembering parts of uh, we don't even want to have to go there because we know who did that years ago and, and said throw it outside on the interstate. Marina, whatever they call her, Bobby, that's what they call her. <laughs> Amen. But we realize that the dangers of the perils of adultery, endangering, and the risks. And it said the lessons of perils. Amen. That if you avoid the perils, <laughs> Amen, of the streets. Amen. And we ain't going to say all the time that the person has to be in the streets, but amen. Uh, you know, a, a lot of them just like to either stab the tires or scratch the car or then shoot you or dismember parts of your body or, or one or the other or two or the three things. Amen. We know how it all depends. And sometimes it be the ones that don't seem like they would do a such thing. Amen. And I, I witnessed that from a nice little young girl that I work with. When I worked at a McDonald's a long time ago and she was having issues with her baby daddy uh, in a door, so I ain't gonna say because they, they were married, but in the state of Texas, you might as well say that. Because <laughs> they had the common law thing going on. But she was living with his mother. And she was 19, he was 19. Here she is, living with his mother, raising their baby at his mother's house. But he was one to step out and with another girl who already had an apartment and and, and 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 all of these type of things and the little young lady was sitting next to me in my vehicle because i was picking her up to take her amen to to work or to school it all depends on well where we was going to school at that time amen so and she said something after she was telling me that she came over to that house or to his mother's house and and, and, and then she said what, what she was going to do, uh, or what she had attempted to try to do, but she said that what she was going to do, or cut the seats up in his car, or, or she did do that. I'm, I'm trying to remember, did she say, did she do that? But when she said that, <laughs> amen, it shocked me what she said that she was going to do, because they were both about the same size. They were very little. 
But she said she was going to drag her. That's what she said. And then she said she was going to cut up the seats in, in his vehicle. Amen. But we realize young love and all of that going on in one's life. Amen. We have to be cautious of adultery. Amen. I think that is either three or six months you, you live with somebody in Texas that's common law. Amen. But we realize that. Amen. We're over here in Proverbs, the fifth chapter. Amen. And I have a few things written down here. Amen. A few points that we want to make. Amen. Because, amen, amen, the def definition of the term of the parents of adultery means that a whole lot of mess can be caused because of. Uh, I didn't speak about the other things that, that could happen in one's life other than, amen, if you're having uh, 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 a, a family of three or five or uh, not just even just having one, but having more than one child with, in, you know, in wedlock and, and one is stepping out or if the other one is stepping out and we realize that the loss the loss and the issues of life because of the perils of adultery. It's the word saying in the fifth chapter of Proverbs, amen, verses one through six. It's saying, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding. So he is as one should understand the cautions of adultery. Then the peril in the thing thereof. That's what it is. That word can cause a whole lot of destruction families' lives. Paying mortgages, going through, getting lawyers for divorce and separation and then having to get visitation with the kids and, and all of this other stuff and on top of whatever other destruction that may be done to one's properties because of even the one on the outside you have to worry about what the person on the outside even if they don't know that you are married and then you get them impregnated and one thing leads to another now you're having to take care of another child and go through that with that and then you're having to be separated from your wife and your it's, it's just a whole lot of mess I've witnessed people being married and building empires, amen, and stepping out and causing financial distress, marital distress, having to lose property and try to regain it. There are all kind of things that this particular word, the peril, the perils of adultery, the perils, the cost, as he said, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. And I can't seem to understand why people don't understand or don't care the issues that this particular word that carries the exposure of risk of being injured or destroyed, everything lost, or even set on fire. The perils. This is the danger. Or oh, it endangers even you or others. It could cause the other person to come and try to harm that wife or the children. Even if they may not know, just because, as we say, you may have impregnated them. Maybe you may not have even done that. But one must still count the cost. That's one of the points that I have to make. One must acknowledge God and decisions on what we know how it is when we find ourselves in that situation. Oh, oh, we want to go to acknowledging God then or, or getting counsel or, or trying to seek the best legal advice possible or the best lawyer. One must rely 
on God to lead you through the right and lead you to the right well. I'm going to say that. Because some people love to drink from other places. Amen. Verse 3, Proverbs 5, it says that for the lips of the immoral woman drip honey. Oh, it looks, lips might look good. They sound good. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And her mouth is smoother than all. But in the end, she is bitter as a worm, but as, as the word says. Oh, we don't think about what it is. The causes that could happen. We think about how good <laughs> the lips can make us be. I'm going to say that. But, as I said, I told you this message wasn't going to be one of those good messages. It, it, it's going to be good, but this is the unindulterated, inspired written word of God we're talking about. So how in the world are you going to know that God is talking to you about your nasty stuff? If he ain't seeing the nasty that's been going on. Somebody don't want to, they don't want to talk tonight, but we're going to still go on here tonight because we know that the exposure to the risk of being injured in the perils of adultery. He said, be cautious of adultery. He said, the peril of adultery. We're given the meaning, but some of us don't care about the meaning. But oh, when <laughs> we know when it pops up, then when that stuff gets the fan, like they say, but what it could cause, endanger, ruin, destroy, loss, or even loss of life, or even the danger of fire, something being set on fire, even you, as we said, we didn't bend down through that. You can go back and do the, uh, 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 watch the replay if you want to. Amen. Because we know that all of these things can happen in the perils of adultery. I just go back over that and say that exposure to risk of being injured, injured, being being cut, parts of the body being dismembered, as we said that Marina Bobbin did that some, some years ago. But we don't even want to have the thought of thinking about that. But we still have to think about the cost and the destruction and the loss adultery can bring. It can be costly. As I said, that's one of the things we must count the cost. But if we acknowledge God before we do the thing, he said, in, in, in his word, he said, amen, over here in Proverbs, as I get further on down, verse 15, I wasn't going to go that far, but I have to go there and say, because he said 15, because some people don't know where to drink. He said, drink water from your own sister and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed and abroad, the streams or the waters in the streets. Here it is, he's talking about the streets. Amen, because if you're stepping out, that's what folks in the street do. Step out. But the dangers, some, well, say, I'm all good with it. But then when one goes to getting impregnated and getting feelings, and it could cause all other kind of destruction and loss. Legal battles. Then you're having to find somewhere else to go. Because the chances are, if you wanted to be with that person anyway, you most definitely would already have went. So you ain't going to be able to go there. She may have somebody here. Or he may have somebody. Whatever the situation is. It's a whole lot of other what ifs and what might be. But we all know that the outcome has no good end. But he said that the perils of adultery. He said, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving dear and a graceful doe. Let her breast. As he said, this is the unadulterated and inspired written word of God. He said, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. He said, for why should you, 
my son be enraptured by any more woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress. Amen. We're going to jump back over here to verse 5. For he says that the more woman and her feet go down to death, and her steps lay hold of him. Lest she lay ponder on her path of life, her always in her ways are unstable, and you do not know that. What they say, you do not know how the situation is going to go when you start messing around, tipping around. You don't know. Everything may be all good. They may know you may have somebody. You may ha may have a wife or whatever else. You know, but it's a dangerous game. Hey Amen. I said there's uh, two more other points I got here to make tonight. But we still have a little ways to go. One must know the security in the word, in the wisdom. As he said, first verse, my son, pay attention <laughs> to my wisdom. We jump over there to the fourth chapter, and it's speaking about the security of wisdom. Because see, that once you are thinking about the dangers of the exposure of the perils of adultery, then that's when a light bulb should be going on. Is it working? Oh, I know it looked good. As it said in the third verse, lips, the lips may look good and feel good. But the old moral woman drip with honey. Amen. But we realize we're going to speak about some people in the Bible. Amen. In the situation, we're realizing that what this could cause and we realize second samuel 11 chapter that was david looking at uriah's wife and he wanted to have she looked so good oh i just can imagine what she looked like with long silky black hair or wavy hair hourglass baby you know how it is when somebody else has something that you don't have, but you want it anyway. We see it all the time, but we must need, we need to think and be cautious about the parables of the adultery. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can jump on over there. Then we're going to jump to 2 Samuel 12, and that's speaking about the caution. Because what happened? Life was lost. Two lives were lost. David sent them out to, to get killed in war on the front line. He tried his best to cover his tracks. As we know what the word says. We can jump on over there. But we realize that David wasn't thinking about what may happen in pregnating Bathsheba and having her going through the process of a cleansing for seven days and going back home and trying to force the husband to hurry up and go home to lay with her so he would think that the baby was his. We don't realize that David didn't realize it, but he still, the damage was already done. Hey Amen. I'm going to try to read through this swiftly. Hey Amen. I got this mic here, but I'm trying to keep it where I need it, but I may just have to do it just like this. Hey Amen. So I can read. Hey Amen. I'm working from a little space. Hey Amen. But the scripture says that I'm going to jump over here. It said that, that then it happened. I love when the Bible says that. Then it happened. One evening, David arose from his bed and walked on the roof. 
of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw the woman bathing. So he had a good look. She wasn't just in clothes. Amen. But he said that the woman was very beautiful to him. Behold. So he sent and inquired about this woman. And someone said, it is Bathsheba, the daughter of Leah, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Then David sent his messengers to her. She knowing good and well. Something had to be up for this man to be called. Huh? But he said, I hope my mic is not going out. I thought it was going out. But he said, then David sent the messengers to her. And she came and he lay with her. Amen. You know how it is when somebody tells us some story and we realize that she probably knew what she was walking into. Amen. The microphone is trying to go out. I don't know why. But we're going to keep on going through this thing. I may be talking a little bit too loud and it's cutting out. Amen. But it says that he lay with her and she was cleansed from her impurities and she returned to her house. Amen. It said that the woman conceived. So he, she said and told David and said, I'm with child. So here it is. Knowing the situation after the peril began. Hey Amen. We're going to try to speed this up a little bit, but we know what the Bible says. That the child got sick. It's because of the Lord and his word. Amen. As it says, David asked, how was Joel doing? He said, now that the people were doing in the war and they prospered. And David said, Uriah, go down to your house. As he said, he was trying to rush in and hurry up and go home so he could lay with him. <laughs> and so he, he could think it was his. But it's, we see how the situation went. Amen. And it didn't turn out like he wanted to. And he didn't go down to the house. And every time he was trying to rush him back home, something still ended up happening because they ate as the bible said and they drank and he rushed them to go home and lay with his wife but he he did amen we're going to jump down to verse 13 i don't know why this thing is going in now amen but we're going to jump down to verse 13. it says david had called him and he had ate and drank before him and he called him to eat and in the evening when he went out to lie on his bed with the servant of the Lord. And he did not go down to his house. He still didn't go. So in the morning, he said, and it happened. And David had wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the front. Here it is. He's going to give him the letter. With all this mess about putting him in the front. You know, sometimes it, it, it pays the best if he had to have a light back then. You can look through and try to read it, but he didn't read it. But he says, and he wrote on his letter saying, set him in the front of the hottest battle and retreat from him. <laughs> that he may be struck down and die. So here it is, he didn't know that God wasn't looking at this situation like that. No, he wasn't looking at it like that. Amen. But the scripture says, verse 17, Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the people of the servants of David fell. And Uriah the Hittite also died. Amen. We're going to jump on over here. Second Samuel 12. Amen. And this is where it's speaking about the child. Amen. And See, we don't think about the dangers, amen, of adultery, even though they were men in battle and they had killed thousands of people, tens of thousands, that the Bible says. But whatever is just before the eyes of the Lord, and the Lord wasn't looking at the situation like David was looking at it. Like, well, if I put him here, it's not me killing him. It's somebody else shooting him. <laughs> I mean, but 
We all know the situation and his words were in his intentions was to make sure that he was put in the front so this could happen so that his sin would be covered up, that no sin will be covered up by an act. No sin can be covered up by water. Only sin can be covered through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we must be cautious of the perils of adultery. He said that wisdom. Son, pay attention to my wisdom and understand. Understand. Think of the perils. And he wasn't thinking about the life of Uriah. He was thinking about him not finding out and raising his child. And he knew it was his. You know, a lot of people nowadays don't even care. They, you know, they, they, they're not cautious. The women just as bad. But he says, one must count the cost. And we must always acknowledge God. For he said, in all things, lead not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him. But we ain't going to acknowledge God when we know we're going to do something wrong that we know that we shouldn't be doing in the first place. Amen. But we know that there is security in the word of God. Amen. And one must be satisfied with the breast of your own life. Amen. We got a little bit further here to go tonight. Amen. And I want to speak about Solomon too. Amen. Because he loved as he had many women. And we know that that, that was his downfall. Amen. David's downfall as well. All of these other women and begin to do the things that they do. Amen. And practicing the idol worshiping and, and things of that nature. Why? You know, it's just I said this before that you wonder why a lot of men do a lot of things. Because they tell them, doing whatever it takes to get what he wants. You know, that's why a lot of a lot of people do a lot of things because they try to just to get what they want. Say whatever they want trying to, trying to get what they want. You know, we realize they had over hundreds of concubines is what the Bible says. But not being cautious. The Lord had warned him to not to do the thing, not to do it. But still, they found themselves doing it. It's because it feels good. As he says, the lips of the more woman, they drip as honey. We realized that the same reason why David did what he did is because he had to have what he was looking at, but he was not cautious. It cost this man's life, and it caused that child to die because of the words that the Lord has spoken. Amen. As he says over here in 2 Samuel 12. Amen. I think I was over here on verse 9. And it says that. It says, why have you despised the commandment of the Lord? Amen. Somebody was trying to call me. Amen. But I was saying. Verse 9. It said, why have you despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil? in his sight. So here it is. David wasn't thinking about what he had done. But the Lord didn't see it that way. He said that you have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and you have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. And thus says the Lord, behold I will raise up an adversity against you from your own house. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives. For you did not, for you did it in secret. But I will do this thing before all of Israel, before the sun. 
And here it is. We, got, we realize that what the word says, whatever man sowed is also shall he be. So here it is. The Lord was telling him, since you did that, the same thing is going to be done to you. Except everybody's going to see. And everybody's going to know. But he said, you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all of Israel. Before the sun. He said, so David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. So here it is. He found a little comfort in knowing that. That he sent this man off to get killed, but the Lord has overlooked the murdering sin. For he said, you shall not die. In other words, he still had to live in order for these things to happen. <laughs> so don't get it twisted. But he said, however, because by this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord. To blaspheme the child also who is born to you shall surely die. So here it is. He was telling them that you're not going to raise this child. For I shall speak death upon this child and it shall die. Is what the Lord said. He said, Nathan departed to the house. Verse 18. He said, on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. But see, David thought that he was going to go and fast, and he did, and he fasted. Seven days, he didn't eat. was weak. They had to pick him up. And here it is, they were whispering among themselves, trying not to tell him that the child was dead, but he knew it because the word of the Lord had said. He knew that when the word of the Lord leaves from his mouth, <laughs> it does not return forward. It's going to do exactly what he said. And he fell into this into this depressive state because he knew what the Lord had said and he knew what he had done but he knowing that it hurt him more to know that the Lord didn't let this child live that's what really bothered him because the scripture says that he pleaded with God Verse 60, David pleaded. I'm going to read that again. It said, David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And that David fasted and went and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of the house arose and went to him and raised him up from the ground. But he would not or did not eat food with them. And on the seventh day, it came to pass. And the child died. See, he wasn't thinking about it the caution of adultery. He didn't care. Set this man up to be killed. Got his wife pregnant. The child died. And after this time, verse 24 says that this is where Solomon was born. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. So she bore a son and called his name Solomon. Amen. We realize that the apple don't fall far from the tree. As I was speaking about the deeds of all of his hundreds of concubines he had. They were like, what and why would make a man want so many? You know, God is good. You know, just when we think that we've seen the, the beautifulest thing or the sexiest thing we've ever seen in our life, and then here come another one. Leave that one, and, and then here come another one. Or there comes another one. Everywhere you see it is, is always something or someone that looks better or appears. Or something in you that makes you have the yearn and desire to have so many in which your eyes may see. Amen. We realize that Solomon, as we were speaking about him, and if we jump over there, amen, and we, and we see how just explicit and how these men were inspired to write the word of God. And you look at these particular eight chapters of the songs of Solomon, you'd be like, did they use the words like that? All of the expressions that they used. Amen. We can go to the seventh chapter. 
verses 1 through 6. Oh, Solomon was a ladies man. Amen. We don't have to read every verse, amen, in, in, in each chapter that I have highlighted out, amen, but I just may do it. But it said, how beautiful are the feet and the sandals of the prince of the daughter and the curves of your thighs. Here it is. That's the word of God. Because somebody needs to know. Somebody needs to know to be cautious of the perils of adultery, the exposure to the risk of being injured or lives being destroyed or lost. Amen. We, we know I saw a time ago on Facebook Live in the live feed there was a, a lady confronting a man with the other woman in the car and it was a looked like it was a Dodge Challenger or Charger or something. Amen. But the lady had busted the glass out and next thing you know the man was outside of the vehicle and he grabbed a hold of her and holding her back from trying to get to the car but she had busted the glass out and next thing you know that he was out there holding her and then next thing you know the other lady was out of the car standing there with a pistol and she un unloaded the whole clip into this woman's face in her chest and here it is her life was lost two lives lost her she was died and the other one was gonna go to prison and yet this man still was going to be out infidelity because of infidelity the cost the perils you can go and look up the meaning yourself when I'm giving it to you. The exposure to the risk of being in. Boy, I hope you stop calling me while I'm trying to preach. Amen. But it said, be cautious of adultery. The exposure to the risk of being injured, destroyed, lost, life lost, vehicles lost. Lives destroyed, families, danger, fire, in the perils, all of these things in danger, in the risk. And we should be cautious to lessen the risk of the perils of the streets. Because stuff like this worldly folk do stuff like this you'll find that church folk married church folk still worldly be doing things like this and cause these perils to happen in their life all because of verse one the curves of the thighs are like a jew as the bible says it and the work of the hands of a skillful worker and your navel is round as a god. He is he talking about licking the navel. As he says, some <laughs> he most definitely had to be <laughs> amen, a ladies' man of the Bible was saying, because the words and expressions that he's using in these eight chapters. As I said, this is the unadulterated inspired word of God. But he said, Your navel is a round goblet. And it lacks no blended beverage. You know, some folk be pouring, pouring, women, boy, pouring stuff on women. We didn't see that happen before. But it said, your waist is as a heap of wheat. Well, we know you eat that. But it says, set about with lilies. It's just the words <laughs> that's being used in the expression, in these songs of song. And it said that your two breasts <laughs> are like two farms, twins of a gust. And your neck is like the eye of a towel, and your eyes is like the pools of his mouth, by the gates of a bath in Rabin. And your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, and which looks towards Damascus. And your head crown like your Mount Carmel, and your hair of your head is like purple, and key is held captive by your tresses. So he is saying that even kings can't resist. But it said, how fair and how pleasant are you for the love of your delights. Eight chapter of Songs of Solomon said, verse three and four, his left hand is under my heat and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. 
verse 6. It says, set me as a seal upon your heart and a seal upon your arm, for the love as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. It flames a flame of fire, a most vehement flame. So he is, he is speaking about this Shulamite to her beloved. Amen. Verse 3 and 4 was speaking about the daughters of Jerusalem. As it says that every time we go somewhere, we see something. We got to have what we see. And God most definitely is a mold breaker. But we must be with the one whom we have created a bond with. As he said, let a man drink from his own sister. Let the breast of his wife satisfy him all the days of his life. He said, be cautious of the perils of adultery. Amen. We know that some people may find themselves on the internet. Amen. We have Tinder. Find yourself on Tinder.com. You may find yourself on blackpeoplemeet.com. Even Christian Mingle or, or any of these other ones that they have. There's there so other many others that they have that I just can't even name. I've seen some new ones pop up. I know I know Bigo is one, but it's another one. Some other stuff that I don't I don't even know. I have I can't get, or recall the name of it, but I know it's some other ones out there. Amen. But the ones that you may be on. But you are not thinking about it. the cost. Your life lost. Life's destroyed putting family in danger, even where your kids. As it said, jealousy is as cruel as a grape in its flame. It doesn't care. That spirit of jealousy takes life. Verse 8, it says, for the 8th song, 8th eight chapter of Solomon, song, it said that we have a little sister. He was speaking about, the brothers were speaking. He said, we have a little sister as she has no breast. And it says that what shall we do for our sister in this day that we have spoken for her? If she is a wall, we build upon her a battlement of silver and if she is a door. Amen? Because there's a whole lot of them out there loose just like a revolving door. Amen? And, and, and some of them may not even have brothers to look out for. Amen? But we realize that as he said, we will enclose her with boards of seats. Amen. We have to guard. Amen. Our sisters. Especially through the high school years. In the teen years. We have to protect. Them. Because if you don't, even at the ages of 13, even at the ages of 13, they begin to become loose. This is the word of God. And it's speaking about this in the eighth chapter and the eighth verse. The Shulamite came from a fatherless home. As it says, where she had been raised by her mother and brothers. So we realize that we're supposed to train them up in the right way. Even if they grew up in a fatherless home. Whether the fatherless home or whether they are in a a, a father figure in, in, in inside the home we still because the father might be doing the same thing there ain't nobody going to do my daughter like that yeah but here it is you like loose the revolving doors you know how it, you know how it is we don't even have to say it. amen but we're just giving you the expression Solomon in the words that we use. This is what I just highlighted in these two chapters. But if you just read through chapters one through eight, you will see the expressions that's used is because they loved other people's family. We must be satisfied with tapping into the same system 
and let the breast of your wife satisfy you all the days of your life. He said, be cautious. See, when you are a child of God and you listen to the words that are being spoken and the risk and the dangers that could cause the perils, the perils of adultery, I always give the meaning of these words that pack a big punch because the perils is the bad things that could happen. But you can avoid it. As he said, my son, Proverbs 5, take unto my wisdom. That's what he said. Amen. I lost my place. Here, but here we go. He said, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Pay attention. Amen. I have one more chapter in the Bible. We're going to jump over that too. Amen. In this chapter, I have spoken about before, and it's something that you don't hear about. You don't hear people speaking about it because the Bible says this thing, this thing has never such a, have been heard of ever again. It's because of the graphic details of the Bible and his handmaid. And she left. She wasn't faithful. And it's all because, you know, she had a father figure because he left and went to stay at his house for a few months. But some women, you may not be as blessed to get to to to, to, to find one like Hosea did because he told him to go and take it. Go and, go and marry one. That's what he said to her. He said, go and find. And he did. She had, what, three? Three children? I think two sons and a daughter, but it don't matter how many they, but we still keep it to the point. It doesn't matter how you were raised or in the house because people will still do the opposite thing even if the father's in the house and he may be stepping out and like loose women but trying to protect his daughter from people like him <laughs> amen we know how it is I don't have any daughters I just have two sons amen but we'll hear in, uh, Judges the 19th chapter and this is I'm not going to read every verse amen but we are uh, verse 12 it said, but his master said to him, we will not turn aside here into this city of the place. And who are not of the children of Israel? And it said that we will go on to Gabar. And it said to the servants, come let us draw near to these places and spend the night in Gabar and Ramon. And they passed by the way in the night. And the sun went down. And on them near Gabar, which belongs to Benjamin, they turned aside to go into a lodge of Gabar. And when they went in and sat down, in the open square, but no one would take them into the house to spend the night. Amen. So, scripture says, just as the old man came in front of his work in the field in the evening, and who also was from the mountain of Ephraim, was staying in the bar, whereas the men of the place were Benjamites. Amen. This story here, <laughs> amen, it is very, very graphic. Amen. As the other verses that I was I was just reading. Amen. But I want to try to speed it up here a little bit. I'm trying to see what verses I want to read here. But as it says that and suddenly certain men of the city had perverted. Perverted men surrounded the house. So here it is. Levite had left. And he went into the place where his handmaiden was, at her father's house. But these particular men were perverted. I mean, they were homosexual. When they saw him, they wanted him. <laughs> but it says, bring out the man who came to your house, that we may know him calmly. But the man in the mouth of the house went out unto them and said, no, my brother, and I beg of you, do not act so wickedly. Seeing this man has come into my house, do not commit this outrage. Look, here is my virgin daughter. He thought she was a virgin. 
because he left Levite to go there because evidently you couldn't turn that whore into the house as Hosea was able to do <laughs> but that was the work of God but we say he says that he is my virgin daughter and the man's concubine let me bring them out now humble them and do with them as you please but to this man do not do a such thing about them uh, tell him not try to try to rape uh, uh, Levite. That's what they were trying to say. He said, but but then the man would not heed him. So they still. I mean, I, I, I ain't gonna say what I want to say, but we must realize that the dangers, a man of adultery, one situation could lead as it led him there into that situation, damage and loss of family, loss. Even though if this had happened to him, it would have made her feel some type of way. But this this story here, how this it turned out to be so 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 bad. As the Bible says, you never heard of such a thing, Danny. You haven't heard of anybody else doing it. You know, uh, and the reason why it was done. And it says that. I'm gonna try to try to tone it down a little bit here now. But it says that. Uh, and they knew her. Well, I'm going to skip back to verse 25. It said, but the men would not heed him. So the man took his concubine and brought her out to them. And they knew her and abused her all night until morning. So here it is, all these men. So they abused her. They probably, <laughs> uh, they probably did it to her in, in everywhere they could put it. <laughs> and, 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 they wanted, and they wanted the man. So we know that that's probably what happened. But it said, and when the day began to break, they let her go. And it said that the woman came as the day of the dawning and fell at the door of the man's house where her master was till it was light. And when her master rose in the morning and opened the doors of the house, went out to go his way, and there was his concubine falling at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. And he said to her, get up. Let us be going. But there was no answer. So the man lifted unto her, unto the donkey. And the man got up and went to his place. And when he had entered his house, he took a knife and laid hold of his concubine and divided her into 12 pieces, limb by limb, and set her throughout all the territory of Israel. And so it was, and all who saw it said, no such a deed has been done or seen from the day that the children of Israel came up from the land of Egypt until this day. Consider it, confer, and speak up. And we realize that if she had a stayed at home, with no fight, none of this would have ever happened. The cost, the loss of the perils of adultery could have caused him to be beaten and raped by those men. But they had beat her and raped her so much she was already dead. He said there was no answer. And he picked her up and laid her on the donkey. Took her in the house and divided her in 12 pieces. So if he had to start cutting on her, and she was still alive, he probably wouldn't have finished cutting her up. But she was already dead. They must have caused so much bruising and swelling for beating her. Even if she was a whole plan of virgin. Because that's the reason why she left. She got tired of being in the house. We have to be cautious for the dangers that a Dutch could cause to the families, your children. Yeah, your love for your wife didn't go that far and so far, but 
when it comes to that's another type of feeling if an outside person brings harm to your children and to you and the wife we have to be cautious what tinder what facebook instagram blackpeoplemeet.com christian mango the devil is on all of them just because it say christian don't mean that you got a whole lot of christians that's in church and still out there doing this type of stuff putting their life in danger just because of the lips of the immoral woman or the immoral man she was on the other foot still the same this that we know we know how it is but we're giving examples that we know what can happen yeah, it'll be the ones that don't seem like they would do these such things but it will cause them jealousy will cause that's a bad spirit the Jezebel lady and that ain't nothing but the jealousy that that one that one be cautious of the perils of adultery. Amen. That is the word for tonight. Amen. I pray that you received it. And you're going to take that word and hide it in your heart and think twice. Amen. If you got to ask God, you already know you ain't going to ask God before you do something like that. But you're going to make sure you try to pray right behind See, that's the, that's the thing about that. We ain't going to ask him before we do something wrong. We ain't going to pray that he stop us from doing something wrong because if our, our mind already made up, we're going to do it, we're going to go and do it. But if the other person already prayed up, the Lord might avoid, may, may cause them to avoid the whole thing altogether if you can't find to stop you from doing it. Carrying out the parents of adultery. Amen. As David says, may the words from my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Just think about what David did. Just think about what he did. Sending him off to get killed. Uriah, getting Bathsheba pregnant, and the child died. Just think about Levi and his enemy. What she could have avoided. If she had to just stay at home. So we just think about that. Think about that. She would be still alive. Then. And that wouldn't have happened. And he wouldn't have had to cut her up into pieces. I guess he was saying. <laughs> she for everybody. So he tried to send her parts out there. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Because some of them like that. As he said, the risk of listening to perils of the streets and a person with a mind of the streets. That must have been what Levite was thinking. It must have been. Because we know that people knew that she was there and other men that she may have fooled with they already know what she was doing. And this man said, my virgin daughter, and what he thought, she was living with a man and left to come to stay there. And knowing that he witnessed probably some visitors, but you know how it is, you know how it is when you're young and or if you do things and you're waiting till folks go to sleep and then try to do it and but we all know that I ain't gonna say what I want to say but everybody body has a different odor <laughs> so we know that when people go to doing that it has an odor <laughs> amen so we realize that but you can't cover things like that but evidently she had the wool pulled over her father's eyes amen he just said be cautious amen 
of adultery, the perils of adultery, be cautious. Y'all have a blessed night. Amen. And I pray that if it's the Lord's will, amen, I shall awaken. Amen. For the fourth watch, I, I did uh, get up to set my, I did set my clock, but I was up so late uh, washing and things. And I had a visitor here. And uh, by the time he left, and uh, I finally got through drying my, uh, cl uh, not my clothes, but my bed covers uh, and pillows and things, bed linens, I should say that. Uh, it took a while. But it was already too late, and I fell asleep. Didn't have but like an hour and a half before 2.30, so I fell asleep hard, and when I did wake up, I have two phones set to go off, and one went off before the other one, and when I realized what it was making a noise, I got on up to cut it off, but I was too sleepy. Then I had to cut the other phone off. Amen. So, uh, but it's what, 10, 11 now, so I just pray, amen, that you would join me in, amen, for the floor. Amen. I had enough rest today. Amen. So I shall return. Amen. For the fourth watch. Amen. And as I continue to watch, amen. Um, if you are watching over there on YouTube, um, you can check that YouTube out because I, uh, I I be um, saving the videos uh, because I am a watchman and uh, and I do watch Eric Stickerbeck and as well as all the current events, what's happening uh, with the war and everything in the um, in the world. Um, I stay up on all of that, and I do save a lot of videos that you all can go over there and watch to stay up on it. And then I just added CNN, uh, not CNN, but CNBC on there. So um, I do watch CNN as well as the news break. I stay up on all of that as well as whatever new updates are on uh, YouTube. Amen. So I do save some of them, and the majority of them I do save with whatever um, whatever pops up there, even about, you know, the shooting and the loss of life. And it, it is graphic. Uh, even on the news, they were showing the dead bodies, you know, uh, of those Russian uh, soldiers. And um, a lot of their weapons, they were salvaging their weapons because they were still useful. Amen. So, um, but they were showing live, you know, dead bodies laying soldiers. Um, so, just realize that if you, we all know that that is very graphic, but it is what it is. And we have to continue to watch, amen, to pray. Amen. To shut things down in the spirit. Amen. For the world's sake. To stop God from bringing judgment on the whole world. That is the duty of a watchman. Amen. It's to uh, inform of any incoming threats to warn. Amen. Even the enemy to give them a chance. Amen. To repent and turn from their wicked way as well as to stand in the gap to cause things to happen. Amen. To speak things. Amen. In the air and uh, on these people over in the, uh, these other countries uh, doing these evil deeds. Amen. So that is the duty. Amen. Uh, of a watchman uh, to shut down things in the spirit and to cause God to stop from bringing judgment. Amen. Upon the whole world. Because we know there's so much evil and, and there's more evil in the day. <laughs> uh, to be weirdo, as the word say, is the world what tomorrow may bring. But that's that's the reason why he has us up to stop himself from destroying everything and everybody. Amen. Be blessed. Have a blessed night.